Hey there, music fans. Yes, I'm going to start a new series. As you can tell from the title, it's a little bit different. We're not talking about vinyl records today. Here's uh, the, the little setup for this. So, I've seen a lot of people, they do these collection videos where they go through their collection little by little. Uh, Ron, Ron Haggerty's doing it right now through his vinyl collection. And, you know, I thought I could do that. But here's what prompted me to do this route. And bear with me for this brief little story. A couple weeks ago on Facebook, somebody made the comment, with the rising prices of vinyl records, blah, 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 has anybody ever considered, you know, going back to CDs? <laughs> and I kind of thought about it. And I thought, you know, I kind of would. But not really because of the prices of vinyl. And probably not entirely. But here's what I was thinking. So four years ago, a little over four years ago, in 2017 is when I started getting back into buying vinyl records. At that point, I took most all of my CDs off the shelf and filed them away, most all of my mainstream CDs. These are all Christian CDs on this, this side and that side, the Christian rock, hard rock, metal. In the back room is a bunch of Christian pop, things along that line. But all my mainstream hard rock and metal, I boxed up and made room for records and started buying the records to kind of replace some of that. Now, I'll never replace it all because I've got thousands of CDs, or at least a, at least a couple thousand. So started playing my records pulled out my old stereo put it all back together all the analog components and everything and in the past i always bought the cds or the digital tracks burned them to my computer put the cds away and used them in a car if i ever needed to back in the day and then just played music to my computer usually i have a 5.1 surround system it sounds pretty good i don't have that now it doesn't sound as good and I've heard people comment about um, how they listen to physical CDs or vinyl. And I thought, you know, so a couple months ago, I pulled out some CDs and put them in the actual stereo with the Bose speakers, you know, different from the computer speakers. And yeah, a big difference on playing the physical CD versus playing the digital tracks from my computer. It just sounds better. So I've started listening to a lot more CDs on my stereo. So I place vinyl and CDs on my stereo over there. I do listen to stuff on my computer whenever it's something I only have in a digital format. Or if I'm just too lazy to get and put something on. But anyway, so it made me think I need to go back and revisit some of my CD collection which is in boxes because I might start wanting to pull out stuff and listen to it that way. The other thing is recently as I've mentioned in previous videos my son got married and he moved out so therefore he'd been living here for a couple months. All of my box up CDs were put in a different room they were a little less accessible now I've got them back into the room that's the empty room more accessible easy to get to grab the box of a's let's go through my cds because as i'm going through them i'm going to start mental noting which ones i want to pull out and start listening to on the physical format but anyway so they are in alphabetical order i'm only going to do some of the a's i am jumping in to um the order of these is based on discogs because when i was pulling them off of my shelf i wanted to put them in the order based on discogs to make sure i had everything cataloged on discogs and Discogs bases things on the first letter. So you'll find Alice Cooper under A rather than C. Things like that. It'll be, it'll be a little odd at times. So um, jumping into that, they also put their numbers first. So while I would say three doors down goes under T, they say it's under three because it's a three. So we're going to start with three doors down. This is uh, one of the most, and I'm not going to go through every one of these CDs. So I, I'm going to go blow through some of these fast. I'm just going to say some words about a couple of them. This is the, I don't have the absolute latest by them, but this is the last one I bought. This is the Walmart special. It's got a bonus DVD. It's got bonus acoustic tracks. Picked that up years ago. Our band used to play, I believe, Citizen, Sh no, it's not my time. Our band used to play that. They had a video for Citizen Soldier and I think Train, but uh, it's not my time. My band used to play from that back in the day. This is an EP of acoustic songs. I love how they do their acoustic stuff like that. 17 days great stuff i think there might have been one or two decent hits from that live album based on the second album which was away for the sun from the sun uh we used to play quite a few a couple songs from here i can't recall we're here without you of course uh when i'm gone i think there were a couple tunes on here that my cover band used to play back in the day we played a lot back in the day on this one. Of course, everybody did uh, at least Kryptonite, which we still do in my band today. Um, Kryptonite, Loser, Duck and Run, uh, 
better life, I think we did. But anyway, this one has... We started saying, hey, we could be a, th a Three Doors Down cover band because we have tribute band because we do so many songs by them. I think at one time we had like five or six of their songs in our set list. Anyway, Three Doors Down. Up next is 38 Special. I don't have a ton of their stuff. Basically, I pick it up whenever I run across it if I need to, which I don't do as much now because I'm more on the lookout for vinyl. Basically, you got the best of Tour de Force. These are mostly things that I have found in used bins at some point. Wild Eyed Southern Boys. Just 38 special. Rocking into the night. And then their 1977 album. I had one of their other ones, which is I think the one that came after this, but seems like it was pretty rare, so I sold that not too terribly long ago in the past year or two on Discogs. All right, moving into A's. Now, this band, I tried, I pulled these out. I had to add this band to Discogs this morning because it turns out they weren't even on there, and I forgot to add them a while back. But I don't know a ton about them. Abandoned. They are a Michigan band. I believe I hooked up with these guys at some point on MySpace. Dates you dates me there, but this was have been mid 2000s, and that's probably how I discovered them because I picked up. This is their only silver CD release that I have. Um, their 2006, just self-titled, abandoned, alt rock, new metal, new metal, modern metal feel type stuff. They have a project Unreality. This is a CDR 2004 release kind of more the same and then they had one in 2005 that was in between those two because it has some of the tracks it's kind of like a compilation of stuff dating back it's called time served 1993 to 2005 so it's got stuff from four different releases early demo stuff like that so and it's another cdr in a case it's broken it's a bunch of tracks and I just this morning added all three of these releases to Discog, so now they have representation. The only thing they were represented on there as is they had a, uh, one of the tracks on this compilation was on a actual compilation, and uh, it was it was listed on Discogs. All right, jumping into the next one, Absalon. Absalon is a, I don't think they've done anything else, um, melodic metal band from Florida. The singer, Ken Pike used to sing in the Christian band Malachiah, which is a band that was released on uh, vinyl just a couple months ago. And you might have seen my interview with the bass player, but he, you know, the band's been broken up for decades. And he went on down. This is just a straightforward uh, metal band. It's got a story behind it, so it's a concept album of sort with some talking and storylines. His vocal style has always been compared to a little Jeff Tate-ish, so you're going to get a little bit of that type of, uh, you know, high range, great stuff. Uh, from him um, yeah so I picked this up uh, I think I was friends with him on Facebook at, at, at one point maybe even now I think and when I did that video with uh, with the bass player with Wade from the band and I did the video talking about the reissue Ken actually commented on my YouTube channel hey Jeff long time you know great to hear this <laughs> stuff anyway all right now we're getting into some common bands again i'm just going to blow through some of these because everybody knows these but uh we got acdc i don't have everything by them i have most everything digitally but not everything physical rock or bust with the lenticular cover Ooh, it moves or does it really yeah anyway black ice of course i have the new one on, on vine on everything stiff upper lip ball breaker as you can tell some of these are in pretty rough shape they were bought at one point or another used all of these are part of the reissues that all came out with the similar looking packaging and everything. Razor's Edge, blow up your video, fly on the wall. I realize now I'm, what I'm missing, back in black, I'm missing two of the Pivotal albums and a lot of the old ones. Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, If You Want Blood, Highway to Hell, and High Voltage. So. Again, I have everything digitally, but not everything physically. And a long way to go on having a lot of that stuff on vinyl. I don't have much ACDC on vinyl at all. All right, moving from there, we're going to go into Accept Blind Rage. You can see that I don't even have, uh, this one's not even opened. And that's because when I bought it from Amazon, I got the digital tracks immediately, and I never opened this. So you know I'm going to be ripping into this to see what I've been missing to actually listen to it on you know the physical product I don't have this one on vinyl yet I only have the most recent release by them on vinyl Stalingrad it's in the slip box in case you're not familiar that's maybe the cover you're more familiar with 
Blood of the Nations. Death Row is one of my favorite albums. This is the Music on CD reissue. I have the Music on Vinyl, Vinyl reissue. Objection Overruled, again, just an amazing, just love this album. Russian Roulette. And again, I don't even have all of the Accept stuff on uh, CD. So this is Metal Heart, and it's also got the live album added to it. So you got the little live EP thing, thing there. Balls to the Wall. This is one of the reissues with the additional, I think there's an additional track, live tracks on there. Restless and Wild with the reissue cover that I don't like as much, but yeah, missing a lot of their stuff on CD also. All right, from there we're going to jump into Adam Ant or Adam and the Ants. I'm going to blow through these a little faster because I got a lot. This is his most recent release, which I was shocked to realize now that it's 2012. So this has been a long time ago. He needs to put out something new. I hope he's doing okay. And I um, saw him on tour shortly after this and have seen him at least twice after this. But 2012, this is Adam Ant is the Blue Black Hussar in Marrying the Gunner's Daughter. That's the name of the album. So, this was basically a return after many, many years away. Live at the Bloomsbury, Bloomsbury, uh, live concert, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was, it's more stripped back, um, uh, yeah, reading vocals, oh yeah, it's an acoustic, basically, him singing some of the classics, acoustic stuff, him and a guitar player and talking. Then we go back into the Wonder Years with Wonderful, just a wonderful album. I love this album. Totally different, more of an adult approach to Adam Ant, his, uh, kind of an adult pop approach, um, radio hits, but also just some really, really, really good stuff. Just, I love this album, but it's so different from everything he's done. Now, the album that came before this, Persuasions, which sadly has never been reissued. I don't know why they won't do that now. I've got a copy. It's bootlegged out there, and it's just a great album. It's very similar to Manners and, Manners of, yeah, Manners and Physique. Very, very, very uh, 90s pop just got the groove and everything and it's a great album and so is this one manners of physique just love this stuff um kings of the wild frontier we're moving into the uh adam and the ant stuff and there's a reason why i don't have all of these on cd i'll show you in a minute so this is one of the original i guess nice price re releases dark wears white socks the uh u.s release with slightly different track order and slightly different tracks in general at some points live at the bbc these are all going to be the you know the just the older stuff, the Peel Sessions. I love the stuff where it's, you know, in the studio doing other things at times. The B-Sides, he, he was one of those ones, you know, these UK artists, I guess. They release an album, then they release singles with songs on the B-Side that you don't have on the album. So this is great. They pull them all together here from all all kinds of eras there. Uh, these are just CDRs of no use. All right. And the reason why I don't have all of those on individuals because I do have this this is the adamant remastered box set so this has the slip box it has all of them with the uh, the the covers are coordinated to match each other and it's all the studio albums so you've got the original UK version of Dirk wears white socks with all the all the tracks from there plus all the b-sides and demos and things like that and I think these are all b-sides uh, from the singles which includes a lot of stuff that came out even before this album absolutely must have my favorite absolute one of my favorite albums um and like i say it's a uk version so it's got different songs kings of the wild frontier it's got some bonuses uh demos things along that line same thing with prince charming i guess i could show you i don't know if you can even see those it's got the demos listed there his first solo album, Friend or Foe, and again, it is just chocked full. It's got like a whole album's worth of, you know, outtakes or demos on there. Pre-tapes, you know, the working tapes, things along that line. Strip, and again, it's got any, uh, all kinds of extra tracks on there. Viva La Rock, and it's got a write-up on each one of those. You can look this up. I don't think this set's available, or if it is, it's pretty expensive, but... 
There's some 12 inch mixes. This is when he started kind of going. It was kind of a little more, uh, I don't want to say pop. Uh, I don't know. Started getting kind of danceable. So they have a dance remix of, of a couple songs. Just absolutely love that album too. This is called Adamant Redo. It's basically just outtakes and or demos. Mostly demos. You cannot read that, so I don't even know why I'm flipping that over to show you. But it is uh, just all kinds of songs that are, and some of the stuff's pretty raw, and it's just writing, you know, writing notes and stuff. But it's fun to have. It's not something you would listen to a lot because when you're used to the original. But yeah, basically, so it's, you know, it's got a write up here that's got, the box set features three new remastered Adam Ant albums plus bonus 15 track Rarities album plus additional space to hold the three remastered. Oh, okay. So when this when I bought this box, I guess not all of that's right. Not all of these were out when I bought the box. So it had three albums in it, and then as they came out, I bought them and filled the box. So kind of like what Iron Maiden did with their vinyl thing. Adam and the Ants. This is a uh, compilation. I remember picking this up in the record store in New York because nowadays you could find this. This is an import uh, made in England. I picked it up in a record store when I lived in New York, and it's a best of album. See the big box, big one of those big double box sets. Urgh, you can tell that's old. Um, best of album, and then a live album. But nowadays, it seems like when you find this, it's just the best of, unless you find this double disc. Um, and it's got a write up and everything. So great stuff. I love having the live stuff. And box. I just love this album. Again, talking extras, tracks, demos, writing, things like that. There's a bunch of that on here. This is, what is it described as? This is a the definitive story on three CDs. 66 tracks, including 27 previously unreleased and all 22 hits. So it's 22 greatest hits intermingled between different songs from different eras that are in different uh, states of, you know, where they are demo-wise. Anyway, and it's got a full color book, a little booklet in here that's pretty extensive. It's another one of those, uh, it's in a double CD case that has got three CDs. But yeah, tons and tons of demos and outtakes, and some of the stuff sounds really good. Some of the demos do sound great, and I actually have a playlist where I put together all the songs that are, in my opinion, better than demo quality, that are songs that maybe are unreleased, and I, you know, it's almost like having an extra album or two of stuff that is pretty good. I'm going to stop at that, though. I don't want this to be too terribly long. I'm already longer than I wanted to be, but let us uh, I'm going to do this in small chunks, and I've got more A's to go, so that's all for now, though. This is for the CD crowd, but hey, now i got some ideas of which ones of these I'm going to pull out, start listening to on CD, and frequently playing more often on CD rather than just digital. Thanks for watching, though. I will be back with some vinyl really soon. Rock on. Rock hard.